Good morning, YouTube. Let's rise and shine. Episode 41. The Lost Boys movie poster. The seventh installment. Um, today we are going to be finishing out the rest of the Lost Boys and Sam and then we are going to try and see if we can get where we can knock out another red coat on here uh, push this thing a little bit further down the line um, we're getting there second coats are almost done let's run this intro Alright you guys, welcome to the studio. My name is King Cavo and we are working on the Lost Boys movie poster on Velvet. Probably, not even probably, most certainly one of the most difficult paintings I have ever attempted. And um, as for, and anytime I've ever done a portrait it's already tough. It's already difficult. Um, I'm already up against it, right? I, I, and, and trying to paint a portrait, I am trying to do justice to what God has created, right? Um, and then whatever the photographer has uh, in mind and, and so on and so forth, right? Trying to capture that particular image to as close to a hundred percent as I possibly can, right? That's already difficult. That is already a challenge under normal circumstances, right? But add to that that now I'm painting on velvet and that presents a whole other level of challenge and difficulty. Um, and so, this being my first real attempt at doing a portrait um here we are and it has been rough um there are quite a number of things that i am not happy with but i am still moving forward in the process because i've never done this before i realize that there are things that i have to to make it and take into account, right? One of those things is that if I were to just take black velvet and apply the white paint that I have, one coat, one coat gets absorbed into the velvet. So in order to get that white paint to where I have it look like it is 100% white, it requires about five coats in all honesty to get to where the velvet is saturated to the point where white is unmistakably white and I can't get any more whiter it, it takes about five coats right that fourth coat it, you'll still see that it'll there'll be there'll still be tones in there right so that being the case I am kind of working in just different levels of tone um if you'll see if maybe you'll get a shot here where you can see that i have three different jars of white mixed up so that i have literally three tones all the way till i get to the straight white tone so that's four tones that i'm working with on the on the low end so to speak and then now i'm working it get to the point where i'm working with 100 percent straight white now it's going to take me four 
tones that way before I'm at 100% white on the canvas. So I'm dealing with like say a range of, of like eight tones. And so now trying to guess and figure out where to go, how to go put them in because I don't want to oversaturate an area that isn't that doesn't need to be oversaturated you know and push the highlight too far or to not do it enough that's the thing too is that to be brave enough that to know well it's not black and i gotta put tone there so the that thing about trying to save the velvet is an issue you know you want your absolute black to be absolute black um now here in is the question that I have asked for myself and uh, so far I have not had to answer it in this painting and that is um, can I mix gray right what if my tone is off right is it fair to mix some black into the white and make a gray and fix that tone. Well, so far I have not used any black paint on this canvas, or on this velvet at all, zero, none, absolutely none so far. Um, will I end up having to use some black paint? Um, it's, it's, it's quite possible. Um, there's a couple places where um, I had some mis brush strokes and I feel like I'm gonna have to go back and make some corrections in those areas. Um, is using black paint cheating? Man, you know, that, that's kind of the, the question that I, I have in, in my head. Um, but what I've come to understand in, in doing the painting as I am doing them, that if I am doing something that is relatively simple, and has no real tones or, or, or anything like that. If it's just like a, a straightforward picture, um, yeah, maybe using black paint is cheating. I mean, that's what the velvet's for, right? Um, but having painted some things where I need to use black in the color to get a tone that I would not get from the black in the velvet. Can, do you understand? Like it's, it's, it's hard to, to mix. Like I could mix on canvas to mix the paint right there and, and find what I want. It's hard to do that on velvet. So in certain places, yeah, I think in order to get the right level of tone that I wanted to get, I, I needed to add black to that paint and, and have it work that way. Um, and so in that way, no, I don't consider it cheating whatsoever. And if the object of the game is to paint the velvet, then it doesn't really matter what color the paint is. So for you, right, you being someone who's an artist, someone who's saying, well, you know, I want to try and paint some velvet. Um, can you use black? Use whatever you want to. I didn't write the rules. I'm questioning what I feel is appropriate for me and it ain't got nothing to do with you, right? There was a point where I even had to ask myself, well, what if I painted a picture and I just used black paint on black velvet? Whoa, I was like, well, well, what does that say? What, what, what am I doing? Well, is it possible? Yeah, sure, I'm, I'm pretty positive that it's possible. Um, and in fact, I figure I'm gonna go ahead and, and give it a shot and see, as soon as I can figure out what I wanna paint in black on black, um, yeah. Sure, I figure anything goes. It's art and there's no rules to creativity and the license is to be as creative as you wanna be. So if you feel in your velvet painting that you wanna use black paint on black velvet, that you wanna use red paint on red velvet, feel free to use whatever is gonna work for you to get your creative flow on. You know what I mean? Don't let any particular person's rules um, halt you from achieving what you want to achieve. 
Um, now that being said, for me, it is part of the challenge to paint velvet to maintain the black of the velvet. Now, here's the thing. At some point in time or another, if I got to make a tone, right, then all bets are off, right? All bets are off. I can determine, like in the case here, um, did I want to put a white underpaint under the red part of the, the, the paint, right? I could have painted that white first. And then, you know, this would be my, my second coat of paint right but it would be my first coat of red and I would get pretty much the exact same results the only difference is that the white paint has a, a white undertone and you can almost see that and so I felt like I just wanted to keep it black underneath the red so that no matter what, the black is coming underneath the red. I felt like in the case of doing something like this, it adds a little darkness to the red, right? What's the red for? It's obviously as a, 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 a what would you call it? Um, it? It makes you think blood, duh, it's vampires. So I felt like if I put a white undercoat and then painted red over top of that 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 would make it be a pretty bright red and not that it won't be bright when i'm done but i felt like that would make it um good where vampires have this evilness that i felt like well no let me just go ahead and have that dark part you know what i mean so the the velvet actually the black of the velvet it acts as a color you know what i mean and it will make tones for you and that's the thing trying to figure out where to put the tones the right tones and how to get them all together and what i have come to realize when it comes to doing portraits at all um generally portraits start off good right you get your your baseline on there and you get your your earliest um, aspects to the design mapped out and set up and that looks good right enough that you feel like okay well now let me go ahead and get started and get in here and start doing the work right and that's where I guess today's subject comes into play um, today I want to talk about the middle game. Um, if you play chess, then you'll understand what I mean by the term the middle game. The middle game is, um, if you think of, of a chess match, there are three levels of play and in any game, right? There's three levels of game. There's the opening, there's the middle game, and then there's the end, right? Sometimes you can get to the end within two moves and the middle game doesn't, it seems like it doesn't even exist. But the middle game is the throughway to the end. You can't have an opening and an end. You know, there has to be a middle. There has to be something that occurs between those two segments of the game in order to facilitate the game, right? Middle game. And the thing about middle game when it comes to painting portraits is that every time inevitably the middle part of your portrait work looks like crap. Inevitably there comes a part for me where I'm doing a portrait and it, it, it gets away from me. It no longer looks like the person. And I feel like now I am having to make corrections. That's that place where you gotta push and pull. If you understand what I mean by that, you'll understand what I mean by that. You know, you're you're pushing this paint here to, to make something happen, but then you, you push it too far, so you gotta pull it back. And then, you know, you pulled it back too much, and now you gotta push it a little bit. And you're playing in that middle ground, trying to find those middle tones, those things that exist between your absolute darks and your absolute lights, 
right? And finding all those subtle tones is a trick. It's not easy, you know what I mean? Whether you're doing color or whether you're doing black and gray or black and white. And in, in, in training, what I learned when I was very young doing portraits, painting anything, I spent a lot of time, it led me into doing comic books. I was so versed in working in black and white. You know, it starts with pencil, right? Everybody's, you know, instead of doing math, I was doing drawings in my notebook, right? So it's pencil on notebook paper and you start working that and you get used to that graphite shine and you know, all of those things. And you get used to working in black and white. Well, when I started to really actually get trained and taught things in school, what I was taught was to work on my, my tone, black and white. You know what I mean? Work on those things. Because if you can figure out the, the different shades of gray, right? More than 50 shades of gray, believe it or not. I think uh, Michelangelo made 101 shades of gray. Um, that if you can use those, figure those tones out and see those tones, where they are, how they exist, well then that will help you and strengthen you when it comes to doing color value. Because um, maybe I'm not using terminology correctly, but because I am being mostly self-taught, um, I just kind of always went with what worked for me, right? And then people, when I was taught something, were really trying to just add things to me. And so I do remember formal classes in school and I do know that there's words like tone, hue, and value. And, and I know that they have specific meanings, but for me, tone pretty much is something that is a black and white issue because to me it's all tones tones of black and white gray right and when i think of the word value for me that word um is a, is for color color value right then it's all these different hues of blue right all these different hues of red right that's how i see it maybe my you know vernacular is incorrect my vocabulary might be off um, if it is, feel free to leave something in the comments and correct me. I, I'm not above being corrected and learning what is and what isn't and how things should be. Um, so let me know if, if, you know, and trust me, I'm not going to go research it because that's what I've been using my whole time anyway. Maybe I will, maybe I won't even change. Eh, it is what it is. Um, but that's what, how I see things, right? So when it comes to the black and white part of things and the middle part of things, figuring out how all that stuff works, that's where the middle game is. That's where I am in this particular project. And you know, now I'm about ready to get the second coats here finished up on everything. And you can see here, especially as I'm doing the red, the difference between that first coat and the second coat. That same thing is, is what's happening with the white, and that's why right now they all look kind of hokey and funky, and to me, that j it's just aggravating, um, but I'm determined. I'm still gonna push through, I'm still gonna make it happen, I'm still gonna keep going, and you know, it doesn't make a difference. If they look like the lost boys when I'm done, or the children of the corn, who knows, who cares? I'm gonna keep going till I call it done, and then, move on but i would certainly say that no matter what um the trick here is finding out where everything goes and how to get it in there correctly and as best i possibly can and have all these things work um when it comes to certain things like star's face right now is it, it has star's face has bothered me from jump street you know what i mean so I'm hoping that as I start building up those tones with her face, that it will start, you know, making more sense and not being so whacked out. The truth is, is that I can, you know, you can correct as you go. So, you know, right now she looks a little Muppet-ish, but, you know, that's also me being overly careful and not, you know, trying to save things and not kill them all just yet and fine tuning. So it's all still a process right now. This is the ugly middle game 
and you know we're we're working our way through. But you can see now that you know after second coats, you can see the picture better. You can see what's really going on with it. And now as we start to move into the next stage, things will start to be a little bit more crisp. Thanks, Art by Cavo. You need some velvet in your life. That's right. Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned. I'm out. Ouch! Watch where you're poking that, mister! Assimilate algorithm resistance is futile.